yesterday we all felt that you know the time for the renaissance of India that we've been expecting for a long time has finally arrived. You know, the, the power of the Hindus is about to come upon the world. Now, okay, I'm a journalist. I became a journalist by accident, actually. I've been uh, covering uh, South Asia for, for 25, 30 years. I've interviewed seven prime ministers. Not all were very interesting people. Rajivani <laughs> was a very nice and courteous man, but he had nothing to say of for value. But nevertheless, uh, I've interviewed him twice. Uh, as a journalist, you know, when you start sincerely looking into Bharat, looking into what happened, uh, you realize that the history of India of Bharat has not been written as it happened. But as uh, British historians and later Marxist historians have written it. Thus, I started writing books, history books on India, though I'm not a, I'm not a historian. And uh, trying to rewrite the, the history of Bharat as it happened. Now the first, you know, the first foundation of uh, of the history of Bharat, you know, in every single book, whether it is Indian, whether it is foreign, is the alien invasion. Every saint, you know, from Swami Vivekananda to Sri Aurobindo to Sri Shiva said that the invasion never happened, but they didn't have that. It was only based on intuition. Actually, today there are scientific proofs that the invasion of Bharat by the aliens never happened. Yet it has divided this country like, like anything, even today. Even today, recently I was in Maharashtra. I was doing a feature on the, uh, on the tribe that paints, you know, they call the Warlis. You know, the Warlis are a very ancient tribe. Now the missionaries still go to them and they say, well, you are not Hindu, you are the original inhabitant of, of India, of Bharat. You know? So convert to Christianity. And they do convert. You know? Today 50 to 60 percent of Warlis have been converted. So it is very important to you know that we, we write the history of this country. And the first thing we should do is show that the alien invasion never happened. Of course, you know, when you look at the history of this country, the biggest genocide in the history of humanity is that of the Hindus. The biggest genocide in the history of humanity is that of the Hindus. It's been swept under the carpet for many reasons, some good, some bad, mostly bad, mostly bad. Um, Nehru decided in 1947 that uh, it was better to keep this part of uh, Indian history you know, under the carpet. But nevertheless, you know, there are at least 100 million Hindus died from the time of the Hindu Kush, from Muhammad Gauri, you know, who took maybe five lakhs, you know, slaves, women, children, young men over the Hindu Kush and they died in winter. Even that is recognized by Western historians that there was a massacre in Hindu Kush. From the Hindu Kush till, till Mumbai, you know, 2011, the genocide of the Hindus is something enormous, appalling. It needs to be, you know, it needs to be taken notice of. So that's what we have done. I mounted an exhibition on the genocide of the Hindus from the Hindu Kush till today. Uh, in 2005, I got the prize of journalism by Mr. Vajpayee in power. There was a check, and with the check, I started a foundation called Foundation Against Continuing Terrorism. Fact. Here, here. Now, why Foundation Against Continuing Terrorism? Because um, I witnessed firsthand the genocide of, uh, of uh, Hindus in Kashmir. You know, I, I covered Kashmir extensively for Le Figaro, which is you know, the foremost French daily in Paris. And I was there when the first Hindus, you know, Hindu leaders in Srinagar, you know, like Tiku and others, they were killed. I had interviewed them, I had met them, and they were started being killed. I was there when Benazir Bhutu, you know, launched a cry for Azad Kashmir, and the next day every mosque, you know, started telling Hindus, leave Kashmir or convert. You know. I was there when the Hindus, you know, ran away without firing a shot in self-defense, and it profoundly shocked me. Because I knew, I knew about the plight of Hindus, but I had never seen it firsthand. And, and the true journalist is one who sees firsthand so that he or she can report. That is, that is the duty of a journalist. So I saw the plight of the Hindus and that time I decided I should do something. So the first exhibition we did 
was on the genocide of the pandits in Kashmir. And we took it all over the world. You know, Shri Shri Shankar, a woman knew. When I showed him the exhibition, he had tears in his eyes. And uh, he helped me to show it all over the world. To show it to the German parliament, to the Polish parliament, to the Israeli parliament, and also to the US Congress in, uh, in uh, Washington. And there you can see there are two US senators. One is, I think, Joe Wilson, the other is Frank Blue. And the Indian ambassador, in his name was Ron and said he refused to come, but the number two came. He was the number two of the American of the Indian Embassy in the Washington. He came. He died in that, and it was just Mr. Jasper. Of course, Bangladesh, uh, you know, many people have talked about this, and uh, the, uh, the genocide of, uh, of Hindus in Bangladesh is. Uh, is something that we should, so we have an exhibition also on the plight of Indians in Bangladesh. Now, whenever you stumble upon any industry, there is one person you come upon all the time, his name is Aurangzeb. Of course, you know that in Delhi there is one of the most prestigious avenues named after Aurangzeb. So, when I started writing books on Indian history, I, I, kept, I came upon Aurangzeb many times. And then I learned that Aurangzeb original firmans, you know, all the edicts, all the orders that he passed. He was a very meticulous emperor, actually. He was a very intelligent and meticulous emperor. So every order he passed, you know, was, was written in Farsi, signed, and it's been kept, actually. It is still there today in the archives of Bikaner. So through the chief minister of uh, Rajasthan who knew me, Mrs. Sindhya Rai Sindhya, I got access, you know, my professor of history got access to the to the uh, uh, archives of, uh, of Aurangzeb, to the firmans, and we did an exhibition based only on Aurangzeb orders, original orders. So, for instance, this is an order, you know, uh, uh, for the uh, for the uh, decapitation of uh, Tegh Bahadur and his sons. So, upon this order, my historian, Professor Batnaga of Rajasthan University, you know, he asked our team of painters to do a sketch, you know, which will be historically correct. Then the black and white sketch was submitted to my historian and to myself later. We approved it and then we did original paintings signed and dated based only on their filmant. So this exhibition, we showed it in Delhi. We had some problem in Chennai. The police closed it down in Chennai. But now it's exhibited in Pune in our museum. For me, Shiva Jamala you know, is a vibhuti. You know, he's a direct envoy of Lord Shiva. And, uh, the work that he did, you know, as a single man, I guess the most powerful army in the world, with a small band of men, you know, it, it's tremendous, you know, it's miraculous. He escaped from Agra, you know. Uh, everything that he has done you know, is something that India should honor much more. Forget that he's not known at all abroad, but in India also, in South India, you say Shivaji Maharaj, they think that he is the actor. So, so we need to honor, and so we did honor him. We did an exhibition on Shivaji Maharaj, showing him at the Vibhuti. Unfortunately today, on the 6th, uh, I'm forgetting that they were created to defend Hindu Dharma. It meant uh, every Hindu family used to donate their elder son to, to Sikhism. You know? And there is a schism after Blue Star operation. There's a great schism. Not many people are conscious of it, but I am conscious of it because my wife is sick and I meet many Sikhs for different reasons. That uh, you know, Hindus and Sikhs are brothers, and we need to remind the Sikhs why they were created. Of course, they did great sacrifice. You know, like the Sikhs have you know have sacrificed a lot for the Hindus. But today, you know, that schism is something that should worry you. Uh, the first phase of the museum was inaugurated by Mr. Narendra Modi. You can see it's in the corner, and Sri Shiravishna. This is my wife in the center. This was the first phase of the of the museum, the Shivaji Maharaj exhibition. Another great glory of India is Marana Pratap, uh, also not so well known outside Rajasthan. You know, there is a great fascination in the West for Maharaja, you know, but not many people know that most Maharajas collaborated with the Mughals and then with the British. The only the only Rajput who actually fought the Mughals and and, and beat them and hold them at bay is, uh, 
He's a Marana Pratap against Akbar. So we also honor Akbar. This is an exhibition in different style than the work new style. We call it exhibition Hindu tolerance throughout the ages because Hindus have been persecuted so much, yet they kept their faith, they kept their tolerance, they kept their acceptance. So this exhibition is in our museum in Pune. Uh, the police closed it once when the Dalai Lama came, you know, they forced us to remove it, but now I put it back. There's also another great, you know, prejudice in, in, in uh, the West about India is that all we Indian women are persecuted, burnt, you know, uh, you know they have dowry deaths and you know they are, they are raped. You know. It is true that there are many abuses against women in this country, but I have never seen a country in which honored women as much as in India. So we wanted to show that. We wanted to show that and so we did an exhibition earlier by the great queen, you know, in advance of her time. You know, she was she was not even from a royal family, she was a great ruler, she had a, she fought the British, she had a battalion of women. Dalashukur was the brother of Aurangzeb, you know, he was beheaded by Aurangzeb. He was the eldest son, the preferred son of Shah Jahan, he should have become the emperor. He was a friend of the Hindus. His brand of Sufism had been wiped out of India. I, mean, I was there in a, Kashmir, when the last you know, Sufi mosque was burnt in Chari Sharif, uh, we also honored it. So we have opened the museum, it's a small museum, but it's open, it's in Pune, about 12 minutes from the airport. This is the land three years ago. We started, you can see on the right, the uh, Shivaji Maharaj uh, Egyptian Hall, and we did a temple. I wanted to do a temple dedicated to Mother India, not to Mother Bhavani, because uh, I'm a disciple of Sri Aurobindo. And he wanted to do such a temple in the early 1900s. So this is a temple dedicated to, to Mata Bhavani. And there's a statue of her giving the sword to Shivaji Maharaj to defend India. It's a unique temple, you know, the Sri Yantra model, and it's open every day we have Aati there. In the second phase, uh, Sri Shavajuka, Mr. Gadkai had given some money, also he came and invited him. These are some of the buildings, you know, slowly we, we don't have much money, but as the money comes, we make buildings. The Dalai Lama came also a year ago because uh, we did something on the Tibetan Holocaust. This is one of our buildings. We try to conserve water, so we, we bring all the water on our buildings. Uh, the Dalai Lama came also, so we have the art in the temple. This is one more building, a building. This is Haliabai building that we finished uh, two months ago. This is a uh, new building that we are using. And we have a gift on the Vedas also because I feel the Vedas are the foundation of Indian culture and uh, they should be there. So all based on the historicity of, you know, I'm working with people who show that the Vedas happened, the Ramayana happened, you know, that uh, they're historically true. This is a future museum. I'm trying to raise money to build. It's a very expensive museum, but we wanted something very unique that that looks Hindu. I want to use it that looks Hindu from, from outside, from the top, from the side. So my architect in Pune came up with this design, which I'm very happy about. So again, based on the Spastika and the Sri Yantra concept. This is some of the, of the uh, plan of the museum. And we want it to be a museum of beauty, you know, with amphitheater, gardens, people bring their children, you know. People come to learn about the history and come come out, you know, knowing about the bad time, but also you know about the greatness of Indian history and the history of Bharat. So this is my project. This is my you know my gift to India. I I have lived in this country for 45 years, and I feel that this country has given me a lot, and this is the way 